So, welcome to our live training session. My name is Matt Shell. I'm a trainer at Unity Technologies, and today we are going to be creating a text-based adventure game. So this is part one of two, and so we have a list of goals for the whole project, which is going to be the two sessions. So we're going to learn how to create a game which accepts text input and responds to it. We're going to learn how to work with strings and some useful data collections to use with them, including dictionaries and lists. And we're going to look at how to create a flexible architecture and workflow for authoring game content in this game, but also that I think is useful for other types of games as well. Not only skills for text adventures here. So we also have goals for this session, session one of two. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the core concepts and architecture for our text adventure game. We're going to learn to create a log of all of our actions. We're going to learn to display descriptions of rooms and interactable objects. We're going to learn how to accept text input from the player. And we're going to learn how to move between rooms. We have a link for the assets to download. You see those on your screen right now. The asset is very minimal. It's really just a font, a kind of a DOS style font, uh, and then a little bit of UI, which we're gonna use to display our text in a kind of a throwback style. Now, let me just show you the game in action. And play. So we have our sort of title screen. So this is the finished version that we'll have after two sessions, right? We're gonna do part of this today and part next week. So we can type, Go dungeon to begin, and we get our first room. So it says you head off to the dungeon. The dungeon door slams shut behind you. You're in a maze of twisty little passages all alike. You see a dark doorway to the north. A human skull lies in the corner. So we are going to examine skull. The skull appears blackened and charred. It smells of sulfur. And then we are going to take skull, and now, the skull is in our inventory, which we can list by typing inventory. So it says you look in your backpack, inside you have skull. So now that we have the skull, we're gonna go north through the door. You are in a vast dark hall. There's a door to the south, back to the dungeon entrance. A glowing orb floats in midair. In the center of the room on a raised platform, there's a blackened magic scarred altar. We are going to examine altar. There is a drawing of a skull scratched into the soot on the surface of the altar. So now we're going to use skull. Suddenly, there's a deep rumbling sound. Dust fills the air. There's a door to the south back to the starting room and a secret passage has opened to the west. So we are going to go west. You enter the room. You see a set of stone steps leading to a wooden door, which is ajar. Light streams through the crack in the door and the secret door leads back to the east. So we are going to go steps. You walk up the steps and open the door. You're blinded by the sun in your face. You have escaped the dungeon. You are free. And that is the end of our tiny little game. So we have rooms that we can navigate between. We have items that we can examine, take, or use. And we have an inventory that we can display and some little simple sort of puzzles in the form of using an item in the correct room will solve the puzzle. In this case, opening the secret door, putting the skull on the altar opens the secret door. So that is what we're gonna be building over our two sessions. In this first session, we're gonna get navigating between rooms working and some of the kind of core architecture that we need to do this. Okay, let me pause and take a few questions and then I'll lay out kind of some of the top level concepts for the session and we'll look at the completed project before moving on. Yes, as uh, Disdain says, even if a text adventure isn't the kind of game you wanna make, there are some interesting ways of handling text that could be utilized in your projects, definitely. I mean, the way I would think about this is we're making a game using as few assets as possible. So this is kind of getting into when you move beyond, let's say, doing tutorials like Rollerball or Space Shooter, where it's basically like all the objects are in the scene and you just click a button to shoot them, and you want to move on to something where maybe there are some different items or different enemies or different actions that the player can do, 
uh, then you're going to start to need to think about data and architecture and structure. And that's really what I'm kind of trying to start teaching you here today. So obviously, text adventures are not like the cutting edge 2017 game genre, but I think that there's going to be a lot of really useful learning opportunities here.